Hi folks, this is Andy Skinner with the RAMP program at Nevadon.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run the new Price Channel Scanner. I'll click on RAMP 8 and we'll get the program running. For this demonstration, I will use pre-internet end-of-day data. This scanner runs equally well in real time, so if you'd like to scan for price channels in 5-minute or 1-hour bars, uh, it works just exactly the same. Step number 2, I'll choose the S&P 500. In step 3, to select a scan, I'll click on the More button, and I'll go to the Price Channels Scanner. This is new in Ramp 8. Up comes the Price Channel Scanner control window, and we'll be going through all of these controls so that you know how to scan for channels in many different ways. I'm going to click on Start Scan so we get a chart up to look at right away. What I'd like to do is explain to you the different colored lines. Note there are green lines, uh, red lines, and blue lines. A red line is a traditional trend line. It's drawn between two lower pivot points, in this case here and here. That is the trend line, and that is the dominant ch channel boundary. Once that line is established, the code goes in to find the furthest point away from the red line. And the furthest point away happens to be right here, and a parallel line is drawn. That is called the reaction line. So we have the trend line or dominant side of the channel and then a reaction line opposite or a blue line. The green lines define how fat and fuzzy the channel boundary is. Think of it this way. If you required that your channel borders be perfect and every bar touched the channel bar to the penny or in case of forex down to the tenth of a penny, you wouldn't find many channels because nothing's perfect in the world. So we have to give it a little bit of leeway and say, okay, how fat and fuzzy are our boundaries? The distance between the green and the red. And then on this side, the distance between the green and the blue. Now that is controlled over here in your control panel, and you can change that. I have it set for this demonstration at 12.5%. You can put it anywhere you want. And you can see it says here, Distance from the channel edge to be considered a touch as a percent of the channel width. That means that it is not a percent of price. This distance is a percent of the entire channel width. So I have this set at 12.5. The distance from the green line to the red line is 12.5% of the distance from the blue line to the red line. That, of course, is adjustable. I like it about 12.5 to 15%. Because I like to see lots of channels. If you set it down to a smaller value, you will see fewer. And I'll do that just so you can see it. We'll set it at 5%. And I'll click on Start Scan. You can see with ADT, the channel boundaries are extremely tight now. And finds beautiful channels, but not as many. And so I'm not sure you would want to set it that tight. I'm going to set it back to 12.5% again so that we'll see more stocks and it'll be a little easier to see. Now there's a second setting that relates to the green line. Here is a checkbox that says show the channel border touch bands. And that's what these are, these little bands or the border touch bands. If I uncheck that and click start scan, I will get the same charts. Without the green lines, you cannot see the border touch bands. Notice that I haven't requested price be near a channel boundary. Most of the time when you're scanning, that's something you'd probably want to see. And that's what the top radio buttons are all about. Right now, it's checked on Show All Channels, and that's what we're doing. So I'd like to show you what can be done here. So I will check the Near Channel Bottom Radio button, and now we'll see only charts where the price is within that band near the channel bottom. And I'll tab through a few so that you can see these charts that are in uh, bullish buying positions right now. I can do the same for near the channel top. I'll click on that radio button. And now we're seeing charts that are trading very near the top of the channel. I'm going to jump back to the red and blue line definitions just for a moment. Note the red line or the dominant channel trend line is at the top and the reaction line is at the bottom. The scanner actually finds red lines at the bottom and blue at the top, and it will also reverse the logic and find the trend lines at the top and the blue at the bottom. So it doesn't miss many channels. I wanted to mention that just because you will notice that sometimes the dominant line is a resistance line, 
sometimes the dominant line is a support line and many times you'll find overlapping channels because the scanner will do channels within channels and we will see some of those in the second set of radio buttons we have a choice between touch on lower high or touch on closing prices I'm going to change it to touch on closing prices and I'll click start scan again now you can see charts coming up where the channels have been drawn through the closing prices and the lows and highs have been ignored. The next set of radio buttons will allow you to scan for arithmetic charts or exponential charts. Channels are very different between arithmetic or exponential charts. If you don't get results using arithmetic charts, you can switch to an exponential chart. It scans equally well on exponential. Note the scale on the right is now exponential. Notice on CVC we have a channel within a channel and note the dominant line on the larger channel is the resistance line and in the channel within a channel we have the dominant line as a support line. The scanner is very thorough and will dig out all channels and show you all channels within other channels. Next we have a set of check boxes. These three check boxes go together. It says show near horizontal channels and if I check that, I will only get channels that are not sloping up or down. Show upward sloping channels, show downward sloping channels. In this case, I ask it to show all. If I only want to see horizontal channels, that's all I have to do. These channels are not absolutely horizontal because you have control of your definition of horizontal. And that's down here under the advanced settings. It says channel line percent of price change per bar to be considered a sloping channel. So I've chosen 0.01% which is going to be a very flat channel. Notice some of these do show sloping but it is very very minor. If you don't like to see them sloping like that you can tighten this number up and make it smaller. You'll get more horizontal channels. The next check boxes are allow the current bar to break the channel and the next one down is require that the current bar break the channel. So if you're looking for channel breakouts, you would want to check that. And we can do a fast scan and see if we have any channel breakouts. Here we have a breakdown. You notice it just broke the bottom line. We found two channel breaks today, ETN breaking its support and MA breaking out towards the top of the channel. I'm going to turn off the required breakouts for now. And we'll move on to the next check boxes. Only show channels with every other channel wall being touched. This one is really important and you'll want to understand it. I'm going to show you two charts. First, I will uncheck that. I won't require that I have every other channel wall being touched. That means it touches the red and then the blue and then the red and then the blue or vice versa. I'll run a quick scan and let's look at A. This is an excellent example. Let's look at the, the larger channel first. Notice that I have a red touch and a second touch on the red. And here I have two blue. But in between these two touches on the blue line, I did not have a touch of the red. It, was, it didn't run up here, so I didn't get a touch on the red, touch on the blue, touch on the red, touch on the blue, a back and forth. I got two touches on the red, and I got three touches on the blue, but it's not every other color. That's what this means. Some people would call this a valid channel. Some would not, and it's your choice. That's what this checkbox does. Let's look at some other channels. Let's look at ADT. This is an example where you get every other touch. You have a red touch, a blue touch, another blue touch, then a red touch, then back to a blue touch. This is every other channel being touched. And it is strictly what you would find if you had this checked. DHR is an excellent example of what you will find if you don't check this. You can see we have a lot of channel boundaries touching recently. And then there's a lot of channel boundaries touching previously. It does form a channel, but we don't have that zigzag every other channel wall touched. You can decide for yourself how important that is to you. I would call this a channel. Uh, however, some may not. That's why this control is in here. The next box says only show charts with confluence of multiple channels. That means what if you only want to trade where two or three channels all come together and form a single resistance or support point? 
we'll see what we can find in the S&P 500 today. So I have checked it. I'll do a start scan. And quite surprising, in the S&P 500, we found 17 with multiple points. You can see here, we have channels within channels. The next check box is show all support and resistance lines. I'll turn that on and it will automatically overlay all of the Bob chart support and resistance lines right over the top of the channels. Here's a really good example. We have a, uh, a, a channel bumping the blue line at the bottom and notice the support lines. There's a horizontal support here. There's a, another support line here. So there's lots of support right here. But they aren't channels. These are just as normal support and resistance line. The only channel is the larger channel that it's touching today. The channeling scanner is a spin-off of Bob Charts, so these controls in Bob Charts directly apply to the channeling scanner. For instance, right now I'm only asking it to go back 300 bars, uh, and we'll look at that later. The number of lines to show is three. If I shut that down to one, the charts won't be as cluttered with trend lines, but you'll miss some information. Swinger pivot size actually applies to the channels. I have it set at 5. If you want really long-term big swings in your channels and to ignore some of the noise, you might set that clear to 10. You can also do this. You can set it all the way to 2,500 bars and switch. You'd have to switch to Yahoo data to do that because that only works in Yahoo. And you can find some channels that go back 10 years. I'm not going to do that right now. I might towards the end of this video. I just want to be sure you understand that these three settings in Bob Charts directly affect the channel scanner. The next settings I want to cover are the number of trend line touches right here or the number of reaction line touches. Let's go to show all channels so that we find something. Let's try setting this to five touches on each side just to see if we can find any channels that are that well defined. And yeah, we're finding plenty of channels that have five touches on each side of them. Interesting that out of the S&P 500, it found six. The last thing I'd like to do is address the issue of looking for channels way back using uh, Bob Charts. When you're running the price channel scanner, it's usually a good idea to click on Bob Charts because the original trend line is found using this scanner. So the red lines are all found running through a Bob chart scan, and then the channel logic is applied later. So everything you do over in Bob Charts directly affects what you'll find. I want to go back 1,200 bars maximum. I'll leave it at showing one trend line. And the swing, I'm going to put all the way up to 10 so that I'm looking way back and I'm looking at major price movements. I'm using Yahoo data to do that. And so I can go here and click on Start Scan. That scan is finished now. And you can see the results here. And I'll start with Ace at the top, and then I'll just tab down through some of them. And what you're finding, of course, is uh, channels that are topping out uh, because I did ask for it to show near the top. And I could do the same thing for near the bottom. But these are long-term channels. Some of them you can see are very long. Uh, they go back to 2008, some of them, and uh, really, really interesting channels. Here at DHR, you can see you get you have a confluence of two channels. You have a large one and a small one, and they're all coming together in a resistance area. So I would anticipate there's going to be a lot of resistance right here. And I'll tab through the rest of these just, just as I finish this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I encourage you to download Ramp 8.0 and click on the More button and go to the Price Channel Scanner and experiment with it yourself. Thank you. This is Andy Skinner, and I will see you in the next video.